friends, this is Bijou Baker. I'm Maria. Today we're going to make cheese curds. Some of the most um, funnest, funnest things to make in, in the kitchen, especially with your kids. I mean, it's like science come to life. Um, a couple of things that you're going to use is that you probably don't have in your cabinet is rennet and sodium chloride. These are the two things that really are going to bring everything together. And it's funny because you use a gallon of milk and I don't even think, I'm exaggerating, I think if I say a half a teaspoon of either of them or combined, I mean just the tiniest bit, but it affects the entire gallon. Um, yeah, I took some cheese making classes and I had fun. We made different classes throughout the year. We made every kind of cheese you can think of. And this one was, was the most fun for me. Um, and last year at Christmas, I made gallons and gallons and gallons of cheese um, and gave as Christmas gifts. And we're having a charcuterie board for Mother's Day, so I wanna put something special on the board. And these, the cheese here, and you get to season it. Season it with whatever you like. So you're just gonna make the plain cheese. When it's done and it's cut, then you add your seasonings and what I like to do is I like to either roll it in pesto and let it sit for a bit. You can roll it in tomato paste and put a little bit of basil in that. That's amazing. This is not mozzarella so it's not quite caprese but it's still, <laughs> no one's going to refuse it. And um, my favorite is the everything but the bagel seasonings. I'll show that, I'll show you a picture of that uh, before, I, before I go. Um, that's it. You, whatever, whatever you like. You like just rosemary and garlic. Roll it in that. It, it doesn't matter. That's the fun part about this. Just let your imagination go. Um, here are the list of ingredients. Uh, I'll show it to you now. There are two brands that I know of, everything but the bagel. Um, across the world, across the country, you're going to have different ones, if if you even have it at all. And if, if you don't, you can make your own. I mean, it, it essentially has just everything. So put in a bunch of everything and, and call it a day. This brand here, uh, Old Thompson, it's saltier than the Trader Joe one. I like the Trader Joe one a little bit better, but again, I'm not gonna say no to this. So um, this is what, this is the brand I have, but look for the Trader Joe. Okay, so starting off, you're gonna need a um, heavy pan, a deep, deep enough to hold a gallon of milk, um, and a heavy bottom so that the, the heat kind of really just uh, works together and you're not gonna get hot spots. So that's, that's important. The other thing is a colander. You're going to need just, just a colander, but whatever you have, there's nothing special about this part really. And some cheesecloth. Now this cheesecloth I really like because it's actual fabric, you know. Um, if you use the regular cheesecloth at the FS store, the, the very inexpensive kind, which is, <laughs> I'm not going to knock that stuff. So open it up. Um, you want about I don't know, just enough to cover your, your colander. And then cut it into strips. Then put it back on top of each other so that the um, meshes are kind of crisscrossing. Otherwise, you're gonna have meshes like this and it's just gonna see through. It's kind of defeating the purpose. But anytime you use that, uh, the less expensive mesh um, cheesecloth, that's what you wanna do. You want the meshes to kind of overlap and interact. And so you'll have several sheets of it, but it's gonna work perfectly. And then you're going to need a bowl when you strain it. And you're going to need something to catch the whey. Now the whey is a topic for a little bit later because there's uh, oh, what you can do with whey. So this is what you need. And I think that's it. You're going to need a knife to cut it. it, it, it it's just so cool to watch. Um, that's it. Here are the list of ingredients. Well, 
<laughs> okay, I already gave them to you. All right now, the steps. This is the this is the tricky part, and this is the part that does matter. And you have to be very um, not calculated, but just a little cautious, and it'll be so worth it. I'm going to walk you through everything. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that tiny little bit of sodium chloride and I'm going to dilute it in the water. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that diluted water and I'm going to pour it into the pot. And then I'm going to take the milk and pour it on in. Now, you're going to stir as you're pouring, but really the pouring of this kind of stirs itself. And you're going to use the whole gallon. Save the jug for when you're done because we're not we're not done with the jug yet. Alright. And now we're going to heat it to 95 degrees. I want to talk to you about the rennet. Rennet also comes in tablets. So it's equal to one tablet. Let me rephrase that. One tablet is equal to one teaspoon of, of rennet. Um, I, just, I just have the liquid. But if you, if you can't find the liquid and you can only get the tablet, you're good. So starting with the um, milk at room temperature is is good for this only because we have to we have to bring it up. So this one is cold, no big deal. So I'm gonna wait and I'll be back when I get closer to the next step. Stirring is a really big part of this. I won't stop stirring until the next stop. And you want to do it really gently. You don't want, this is not something you want a vigorous stir in or whisk. Just a gentle, keep the uh, liquid moving. In the meantime, I'm also going to add the rennet into the water. So you're going to put the sodium chloride in the water and you're also going to put rennet in the water to kind of just dissolve it. This will be going in next and continually gently stirring. Okay, next I'm going to add the vinegar. And I'm still trying to get this to 95 degrees. Oh, it's taking its time. That's all right. Okay, so we're at 91 right now, and I want you to notice the way I'm stirring. Basically, it's just left to right. The next step, the stirring is going to be completely different, and with a reason. It'll be more in a oval, circular kind of movement like this. But until then, left to right, just to keep the liquid moving. Okay, we hit 95, and I'm going to take the rennet, and I'm going to put that in. Now, I'm going to have 20 strokes, like a Ferris wheel. One, two, three. 20 times. Down and up. All right, this comes off. Now, you're gonna use the lid from your milk and you're gonna place it right on top. And you're gonna leave this completely untouched for 20 minutes. 
just let it sit. Okay, so the timer just went off. This part is so cool. And the, and the reason that we have this in there, because the structure of this changed completely. It now looks like uh, yogurt. Is that a trip or what? You see it bouncy? That's why we use the, the lid for that. So now we're going to slice it. <laughs> just, just follow along. So you're going to take long strokes, about an inch or so apart. I wish you could see this up close. So we're getting these slices. Let me change the camera angle. There's got to be a better way for you. Okay. And then I'm going to go the opposite way. Is that cool or what? I don't know if you can see it. Gosh, I wish you can, but we'll be, you'll be able to see bits and pieces as I go through. Okay, from here, I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to just spin the pan around or the pot. You see how it's separated like that? And then I'm going to go lower and spin it again. Is that weird or what? Okay, I'm gonna let this sit for two minutes, just as it is, and then I'm gonna put it back on the heat. Okay, I'm just about ready to go to the next step, but I wanted to correct something I had said earlier, and I did correct it in print, but I said that I was gonna let it uh, sit for 20 minutes. I actually let it sit for 15, uh, and that does make a difference. So uh, I said 20, but follow what the word said at 15. Now, I'm gonna turn this back on, going to turn the heat back on and I'm going to stir the curds. Okay, you're going to see you're going to see this is just the coolest part. Uh, I'm going to bring the temperature back up to 115. So let me see if I can make this best for you. So you're going along the bottom, scraping the sides and pulling it up. Ah. Is that cool or what? I'm not trying to keep the shapes, you know, I, I have it cubed off, but I don't want them in cubes right now. I'm doing this to break up the cubes that I just made. And if I see that they're not um, breaking well, I'll just get the knife and cut them into smaller pieces from the bottom on up. And you can really see it separating from the whey. This is good. I don't have to chop up the pieces, but if I saw pieces that weren't going to break, I can just take the knife and break them. All right, so I want to get it to 115. I'll just keep it moving. We're at 90, we're at 100, so it's not going to take long at all. I would ordinarily go fast at this pace, but I really want you to see what I'm doing. So we're at uh, we're at the temperature we want. A little hotter, that's all right. I 
Okay. Okay, I'm going to transfer the curds into my colander. And we're doing it this way rather than just pouring the whole thing in because it's delicate. So I don't want to just shred it. When I have the majority in the colander, then I'll pour all of it in and then separate every bit I can possibly get. Okay, so we have almost all of it in. I'm going to pour it all in. This will take a few passes. Okay, so I transferred it to a pot too because there's a lot of whey. Um, and I'm just going to let the weight of the water and the uh, curds just just take care of it. It's almost down and I'll just finish it up with the rest. That's it until we get to the next step. I'm just going to wait till it's it's really really drained. Okay. This this I just love making cheese. I really it's just so cool. So I have it in here. I'm going to take salt and I'm going to put it in here. This is also going to get rid of some extra water. If you wanted to put the seasoning in at this point, you could. I'm not going to because I like having a variety of seasonings. So I'll leave it plain and then season as I want to. Okay. From here, we're going to take up the corners. And we're going to twist. Not all of it, just, just that. We're just going to twist it like that a couple times. With this down. We're going to put a plate. Yeah. We're going to put a plate on here. And then the gallon of milk that we emptied, I filled it with water. And this is our weight. Find a spot where it'll sit, actually. All right, I, I leaned it up against the, the hood. So it's gonna sit like this. For 15 minutes okay so that's gonna sit for 15 minutes you're gonna be so impressed with with the finished product it's just cool um, here is the way um, the uses for this I'm telling you if you're making um, if you're making gravy and you need water you can use the whey. any recipe you're making that uses water you can use the whey. You can um, dilute it just a little bit and put it in your garden. This is what I hear. Don't take that one for credit because I can kill a silk plant, so I'm not an expert in that, but that's what I've heard, so that's what I'll share. Do it, don't do it. You can put it, um, you can give it to your animals. It's really a good source of protein for them. That's all it is, protein. It's protein water. <laughs> put it in shakes or, uh, there's so much. Google it, you'll see a ton of things to use. 
just try not to throw it out because it's really, it's all protein. So think about it. Let your mind go. So another tip. Keep an eye on the 15-minute set settlement time um, because it can settle unevenly. So if you have the big gallon of milk on it or water um, and the left half is flattening out more, then you're going to lose your, your cookie. So uh, twist it, adjust it, do whatever you have to do to keep it level and straight and solid, and that weight's going to get rid of even more weight and give you that yum yummy uh, cheese curd. All right, the timer went off. This has served its purpose, as have this. This is, this is the, the curd. So we're gonna take this out and put this onto a tray. And this tray is just to get it cut. This uh, cheesecloth can be reused over and over. You just, just wash it. All right. It's it's so interesting because it looks just like I don't know. You can't see the cheese cloth pattern, but it looks just like fabric. All right, and away we go. This part is so cool. We're just gonna cut. Slices. I'll stop there. That's it. That's cheese curd. So we're going to take this. We're not done with it, mind you. There's, there's a lot I'll cut later. So I'm going to take some of these and pop them. You know what? You're too far away. All right. So I put some of the um, everything but the bagel seasoning in a baggie. And I'm going to just pop them in and shake them up a bit. There is still whey coming out. No worries. Shake off what you don't need, and then you've got this beautiful coated cheese curd. It's just, it's just such a dynamic flavor. I'm shaking off the excess because I don't want. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, spices on here. So I'll continue with more. Another another uh, topping is the the pesto. Whether you make your own or store bought, it doesn't matter. Just just coat it, let it sit a bit. Of course, the longer it sits, the more it's going to absorb. So keep that in mind. You can even put a whole jar over over these a bunch of them and let them sit overnight. You want these things to get cold before you serve them or eat them. But man, that's beautiful. All right, I'm going to continue with both. There you go. These, I think I'm going to do a video on, on deep frying these because who doesn't love deep fried curds? Um, but you can adjust your seasonings to whatever you, whatever you like. I, the pesto. Mm, mm man. Mm-hmm. It's so light. This is, um, mm. that pesto really, I taste a lot of the pesto. The cheese is mostly a, um, a flavor. And there she goes. Such is life. 
the cheese is kind of like the, the delivery packet for the flavor. So dress it up, do whatever you want to, but this is a phenomenal additive to different uh, charcuterie boards. So there you have it, my friends. Homemade cheese curds. Give it a shot. Until next time, happy baking. Ah, oh, that was fun. Don't forget to like and subscribe.